Hello, and welcome back to this series of videos where we are explaining a little bit uh, the basic of overset meshes. In this sort of video, we're going to do a little bit post processing. Okay, so post processing is pretty, pretty much the same as we with normal meshes, but I will show you a few stuff how to extract fields, how to visualize cells, how to clean out a little bit since. So we're going to work with a 2D case and a 3D case. The 2D case you have it, the usual stretch mesh. And then the 3D I will show you the, the results, but then we're going to load that one because we're going to work in that case to set up 3D 3D meshes and real body motion. So I already have a solution here. Okay, I will open. So this case was run in parallel. So as you saw parallel built-in. Remember that we're using open phone version 8 and 12, the one that supports all set meshes. So <coughs> then we launch this, the compose case, apply. So this is what we have, okay? The normal cylinder and see that we have here all the solutions. Even inside the cylinder, we don't we, we don't have our mesh, okay? In the in, in the component mesh corresponding to the cylinder, but we see that one because it belongs to the background mesh. So there there are some filters that we're going to use just to erase that one. Also pay attention here that we run the case with a very fine mesh. Okay, so maybe you have the stretch mesh. What you need to do is just use the uniform mesh and probably increase the the spacing of the background one. So this is a little bit more time consuming but you will get pretty much the same result. So the first thing that we need to do here is that we need to extract the sum. So see here that we want to visualize sum ID. See that we have sum ID 0 and 1, okay? In this case, we have two component meshes. You have more component meshes, we have more sums. But the problem when you do post-processing to this, see that the regions overlap. So sometimes as you visualize your results, you will see here, for instance, that you would like to see the solution in the solution with, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the mesh cylinder, which correspond to the fine one, and then you want to have the, the, the background mesh behind that one. But it's difficult to, to control that one, taking the solution as it is. So what we need to do is apply some threshold filter. So the first thing is that I do, let me just a little bit here. Let me check the background. I like to use the white background. So let's do slice. Okay. Normal set. I don't want to see the plane. And I don't want the triangulation. So, so far we have this. Let me show this on ID. So we want to see the cell bodies. And now we want to extract the two different cells. So what we do is just apply a filter here. See that you have threshold. Once you might guess, you just select the sun ID. Okay, reset value, and we want to extract zero, which is the background one, and see that at this point we have just some zero. And now we do the same threshold, but we apply to slice one. Okay, so another threshold, some ID, reset, and we want some one. See that you have it there, some ID, and you have the two sounds, but you see that they are in the same plane, so it will be difficult to visualize and you will have this problem. So what you can do now is that this threshold, you can just shift it in front of the background one. So see that you will have, by the way, you will need to access here the advanced features here. And see here that you have the transforming box. So what you do is just shift it a little bit. Okay, 0 0.2, and see that now you have it in front. You don't see it there, but let me pull out your value still. So as it is 2D, there is no problem. If it is 3D, you will experience similar problems. So what you do is just a small distance that is just in front of that body. Okay, so now we set here, and now we can do the usual visualization. Okay, so now see that very nice. We see the colors there. Okay, they are now overlapping and see that in this region is the interpolation. So you see that there will be some differences there, but then that is part, remember, that is part of the interpolation. So maybe some people, developers will claim that they have some conservative interpolation, but honestly, in the oversight community, it's widely accepted that this interpolation is not conservative. So this is part of the uh, 
the interpolation of errors, the function that you are introducing. But if you have good mesh in between both mesh meshes, you know that you are going to, to have a good solution. Okay, so see that kind of are good meshing, but you can do even better, but you can play a little bit with that later. So the next thing is that I want to show you, remember that here we have also a new field, cell types, that defines the type of cells we have. So remember that zero calculated, two is the black cells and one is the interpolation. So computed by the solver next to walls. So see here that we have that wall there, why if I want to visualize cell type there. So basically the library, what it's doing is computing all this interpolation fringe close to this wall. So again, it's a good pra practice not to have very large cells here. So the interpolation will be close to that one. Okay, so here we can do even better adding some stretching, but for our purposes, it's okay. And see here that then we have the interpolation, the overset patch that was set by the user when we did it. So this is set by the user. This one is set by the, is computed by the solver. Okay, so you see that this is set by the, that by the user. So what we need to do now is, I don't want to see this hole. So again, you go here, you apply another filter, the threshold, so that in this case, cell types reset. And I don't want to see, for instance, cell type two, move it a little bit, and see that now you are not seeing that field, okay? So let me change here. Okay, if I don't want to see the interpolation fringe, just go below the value, which is one, zero, and now you don't see that one, okay? So surface, and this is what we have, okay? Now we don't have the hole there, okay? And again, you want, you can apply another threshold here to erase this interpolation fringe, so you can go here, so, so type, Reset. See, in this case, we only have from zero to one because we don't have holes here, okay? And I don't want that, okay? Okay, so you see, everything is calculated, okay? So we have all these cells are calculated, the cells that we're seeing in our solution, okay? So this is usually how you do the post-processing. You just, you just want to see everything that is calculated. And now, we can put the fill. So from this point on, the post-processing is done in the usual way, nothing changed. So you can compute forces, you can compute different fills, change uh, pressure fills, do calculators, nothing changed, okay? So we have their velocity, and then we go to P. Again, well, you have to mesh as you change it. Okay, as you see, nothing changed. So, for instance, let me show you, for instance, I want to compute vorticity, so you can go to your solution. So here I will go to size, and then I will add a new filter, which is alphabetical, gradient of a structural data mesh. Okay, see that I want to use velocity, U, and then compute vorticity. If you are working in 3D, you can compute criterion here. Okay, so I apply this one, and we have the new field here. Okay, now we can change the order of these filters that we apply. So, for instance, right click here, change input, put it here, do this in here, change input, put it here, and what voila, we have. So what we did, the previous threshold that we have, we change the connectivity to the new one, so that information will be now taken from this one. If you don't do this, you will need to compute all those thresholds in the new field. It's up to you. Okay, so now we can visualize here vorticity. Okay. Okay, hi here, we have here vorticity and vorticity. And probably here we're going to see better the diffusion server there in interpolation area. So let me see the one normal to the set plane. Okay. Change the branch. Minus two, two, and this is what we have, okay? So a nice vorticity fill. Okay. By the way, you can also do the post-processing in, in the open fund using the post-process, the function object for Q criterion, vorticity, whatever. I think if I would recall, vorticity will give you a problem. I don't know if they have fixed that, that error, but 
you can you 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 can compute it within uh, Paraform. Okay, so this is a basic post processing. For instance, you want to plot solution along a line. Remember that. Okay. So I want to plot it in this one. Oh, let me do here in gradient along a line there. Show me wireframe. Okay. And the line there. So you can change the position. Let me do two maybe. And two maybe here. Okay. So see that we're sampling in two component meshes. And as you see, you access that information with no problem. Okay, then so that here. And for instance, let me see just the component of velocity magnitude. Okay. Okay, so this is velocity magnitude, and see that you are capturing the whole way. Everything doesn't matter if you have two, three, four component meshes. Okay, you do the post processing the same way. The thing that we do is just to do nice visualization. So we do the cut plane, the interest holes, and shift uh, zones a little bit. Okay, so for instance, let me hide this one, and let's see some types. So for instance, sold an ID and see that we go from zero to one, the regions, okay? And cell types also, we have different cell types, zero, one, two, okay? So no problem. So this is the use of post processing. It's not that difficult, okay? This is 2D case. So now let's go to the 3D case. So I already have a solution, okay? This is not already, this is not already uh, in, in our website, so we're going to load this one when we do this tutorial, okay? So just to show you how to do post-processing, but you can choose any any 3D case. So again, so what we have, let me show you this case. This is a nice case, probably you're familiar. So what we have here is a falling body, okay? So see that we have this body and it's falling, okay? So here we have the free surface and see that we have the nice overset mesh and this gives us a, a lot of flexibility because this motion is a really boy motion we don't have no limitation okay in this case this is a solution using mesh morphing and see that it is running but we're almost in the limit here so too much stretching here and see here that we have also the cells that are not very well aligned for it with the free surface so this is alternative, the overset that will let you do basically retired motions on multiple bodies at the same time. Okay, so this is will be our solution. See here that you see these two different surfaces. This is just to the overset meshes. Okay, that's not a problem. Okay. So let's do this post-processing. So we have as usual two bodies, two meshes, so floating body generator here, and then in the background we're putting all the solution. We're running the case here. So Paraform built in. Decompose case. Okay, give me a program. Okay, I need to enter into background. Decompose case, apply. So you saw the light to you. Well, no, but I'd like to use white background just to save the images and everything. So we have this, and let's do the same operation as in 3D, as in 2D. So I will select everything, and I will apply a filter called extract block. This one. Okay, so I will create different wall blocks with different information. So I have internal mesh here. So now here I have only the internal mesh and I can select another one which, okay, I want to put there the floating body, okay? So see that this is the body that is falling. And now we can do the previous operation. So strap body, uh, ta -ta, that one, outline. Let me change the color of that one, solid, and 
So see that we have the box there and I can add in that one the free surface. So alpha water, reset, apply. So the color, let me change the color. So kind of resembles water. Okay, so now you play and you see the solution. So if you want to see the cut plans, Will be like within 2D, so you just add those couplings here. So let me add in this block here size there, and I want to visualize there for instance Sun ID, and see that you have the two suns there. But it was it is a similar pro a similar problem to to the cylinder case that kind of will be difficult to visualize fields because they are just at the same in the same plane okay so what you can do is a threshold okay in this one extract one song then extract the other one and then shift it a little bit so sun id here i want to get sun id zero which correspond to the solution in the background mesh okay so I didn't see that on the background mesh and now let me track the other one the one corresponding around that body okay so sun id one so that here and sun id okay so so see that this is everything around the body okay so you put buff difficult to see but now we can just apply a transformation in this case with V in this axis just a little bit okay not too much negative value okay less than that I see that now you have your here. So we can also visualize as usual the cell types and this will be very interesting. Okay, now we have cell type here and here. Okay. So look at what we have on the body. And I want to see the wireframe of the body. So see that the solver again is computing the hole as the cylinder is moving but also is computing this interpolation area and around the body see that you have again you have your calculated cells and the interpolation fringe that was set up by the user to start so this one was set up this one the other is computed by the solver so as you let it run you will see that everything is updated automatically by the solver Okay, see that all the regions. And again, the comment, for instance, this is not the ideal case because these cells are very uh, large. So see that the interpolation when it's moving sometimes, you might have problems that the body will be too close to the other cells, so that can give you some, some problems. So what you can do is make the, the cells smaller, okay? So to have a better transition, to compute better the solution. But again, this is a good practice also in overset measures to see this case. So see what happened here that you have to do this or interpolations on how it changes. But if you make this mesh finer, the one around the body, corresponding to the body, you will control that. But a good practice again when doing uh, overset measures to choose wise, wisely the time step. If we run the simulation with a larger larger uh, time state, we won't give enough time to the solver to compute well the cell. So when we move from one cell, from one time step to the other, it might happen that due to precision errors and whatever, because we have some a large time step, we are going to have some interpolation soils here instead of having those cells blocked. So choose a low CFL number, a good mesh to avoid these problems and usually when we do overset meshes we're going to see that when we do moving bodies there is the option to compute the mesh cfl number so usually this mesh cfl number will one that number less than one okay if you put something more than two it's likely probably that it will move too too fast and you will have problems computing the solver will have problems computing uh 
how these cells change from time to time in this simulation. Okay. So see here the problem that I was the problem you will see that when you run you will see here kind of two surfaces here. Okay, this time so, so see here. So there are some gaps. So those gaps are remember just the interpolation between meshes. So if you do something finer, you will get something better. Okay, but that's not a problem. Okay, so a nice simulation, a nice post-processing, as you see, very similar to the usual one, but you should have in, in, in mind how to do this thresholding to extract zones and also cell types and when you are doing also the cut plane cells that you might move one in front of the other to avoid the overlapping of those planes. Then for the rest, sampling, computing fields, string lines, everything, it works in the usual way. So just to show you all as well the simulation to compare results that here we have, I think we have it somewhere, overset and morphing mesh, okay? So see that the results are very similar, okay? So you will see some different, but the percentage is very low, okay? So for instance, these two cases, we have a good agreement, then we have this one that we are doing morphing mesh with remesh. So at one point when the mesh quality is too low, we remesh everything. Okay, so probably in our opinion, that's the best approach, but requires a lot of user inter intervention. Okay, so as you see, similar results. This will be a case that we're going to do later. So I hope you enjoy this post processing. And in the next tutorial, we're going to work with moving bodies, the cylinder. Today and we're going to put it into motion and then we go into read it with motion and so okay thank you very much for your attention and see you next time